Hey guys, today I have the Jumper T8SG Multi Protocol 10 channel radio courtesy of Banggood. It's an all in one radio transmitter that has all four RF chips built in the CC2500, A7105, CYRF6936, and the RF24. So, the first thing I'm going to do is quickly unbox this uh, thing. It comes with a really nice case to transport your transmitter, and inside you'll find the uh, actual T8SG itself. And as you can see, it comes with a neck strap as well. This transmitter is styled after, after the Futaba T8FG, so it's got a very similar look to it. And if you ever use the Futaba radios, you'll know what I'm talking about. Essentially, it's got that silver faceplate and it's black all around. So at the very top, you have the four three position switches, which comes in handy for changing rates. And it's got two uh, rotary dials in the center. And it's got these uh, trim buttons and a very large power button at the center. And these sticks, they're pretty decent. They are uh, replaceable as well as adjustable. So all you have to do is unscrew them to adjust the height of them. And if you screw them off completely, you can replace them with other transmitter sticks as well. And uh, here you can see I'm making it a little bit longer than usual. And here it is uh, with it completely removed and you can adjust it to whatever height you want. And on the center here, this is the LCD screen. It's actually pretty small, but it's usable. And here's the control dial, and here's the enter and back button. On the back, there's really nothing other than the handle. And at the very top, you have a headphone jack, which is for the training port. And uh, the antenna itself is removable as well. It's a foldable antenna that you can twist off if you want to um, replace it with something else. Some transmitters like my Tyrannus QX7, where you can't actually twist off the antenna, it's a nice feature to have especially for a small little uh, transmitter like this. And on the bottom, you have the battery compartment. Unfortunately, the battery isn't included, so you do have to buy another battery to power this thing. So it uses a two cell um, 7.4 volt uh, lithium polymer battery. And this battery here is a Turnergy 1300 milliamp hour battery. And it is about 14 by 28 by 90 and it fits in there pretty good. This other battery on the left also fits in there, but the 1300 milliamp one by Turnergy fits a lot better. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And essentially what you wanna do is just put it in there and then you want to use the balance plug to uh, hook up to the transmitter. So uh, most batteries will have this uh, balance plug and the main plug, you can just uh, basically tuck it away inside. And then once you do that, you can put on the cover. So this is the charger that I use to charge the battery for the transmitter. It's a really small portable charger that you can use with the 12 volt uh, two amp power adapter as well to power it. This is my favorite battery charger and I use it to charge all types of LiPo batteries, especially for uh, my transmitters. So the batteries that I use for my Tyrannus, I also charge with this thing as well. So at the center of this faceplate, you have this giant on off button. And uh, this is what it looks like when you turn it on. The screen is a little bit small, but it's usable. It's got also two LEDs at the in the center as well to tell you the power status. And um, I actually think it's really nice and small. It uh, reminds me a lot about my Devo 7E and it's great for using it to fly like uh, small indoor quadcopters like the Ishin E10 and they're definitely better than the included um, stock transmitters for sure. Now it uses an STM32 based MCU to control the four RF chips. So it will have room for more features or protocols if the firmware does get bigger. Instead of having a separate four in one module, it's now built into a small compact radio. It's really awesome because other than creating a model setup, it's all ready to go when you unbox it. It also has two megabytes of onboard flash for storing model configurations. This radio transmitter can speak pretty much every protocol that's available in the RC hobby, including DSM2, DSM-X, Hubson, SEMA, FlySky, FRSky, and those are just a few of the protocols that it supports. Check out the description for a listing of all the supported protocols and modules. This radio is a nice upgrade for anyone tired of carrying a different transmitter for every RC aircraft they own. If you see my other 4-in-1 multi-protocol reviews, you'll know I'm a huge fan of these because you can control everything with just one transmitter. So the transmitter runs a build of Deviation TX. It's essentially like a Volcara Devo 7E, but with all the RF chips pre-soldered with four switches and two rotary dials already installed and with Deviation TX preloaded. 
I used to have a Devo 7E and I really miss the compact size of that radio. And even though I have quite a few radios, this is a nice addition for times when I want to pack lighter to fly my RC models. It has a similar weight to the Devo 7E as well, weighing in at a uh, weight of uh, 338 grams without any batteries. Now I'll show you the inside of the T8SG and there are basically five screws on the back which you need to take out. You want to carefully take off the back cover because there is a wire that is attached to it which uh, basically hooks up, hooks up to the training port I think and uh, this is what it looks like on the inside. So there's not a whole lot of stuff as you can see. It's actually pretty simple and at the very top you'll see the uh, four three position switches and this is where the uh, switches are. And next you have the antenna. It's right up here. And that's the four in one module. And here is the battery input where you plug up your LiPo battery, your two cell LiPo battery. And over here, that is the uh, motor for vibrations. And this is the mini USB port, which is used for updating the firmware as well as copying models to and from the transmitter. And like I said, it's actually very simple. There's um, not a lot of stuff going on here, but um, I just wanted to show you what it looks like on the inside. So the mini USB port isn't really accessible unless you take it apart. So what I recommend is that you install like an extension cable in the um, compartment itself like this. And this way you can access the mini USB port from the uh, battery compartment. And I'll have a link to these uh, extension cables in the description if you're interested in picking one up. Now I'll show you how to set up a very simple four channel model configuration. And what you need to do is turn it on and you will see the splash screen. So very first thing you want to do is go into the main menu and that's just by hitting enter and you will be brought to the screen here which has um, the model menu and you want to go into that and then you want to select model setup. So I'm going to set up a configuration for the Esheen E10, which is a very popular uh, mini quadcopter. And I'm going to use slot uh, number two to configure it. So hit enter. And the very first thing you want to do is reset it. You just want to clear out all the settings. And then um, next thing you want to do is rename the model. Naming the models just makes it really easy for you to organize your models and I'm just going to give it a really simple name by um, just naming it E10. So E010 and that's all I'm really going to do. Um, if you want you can spell out Esheen E10 if you want because it does have a lot of characters that you can fit in. The next thing you want to do is set the um, icons. So built into this it only has three icons, the heli, multi and plane. So in case, in this case it's a multi uh, rotor so we're going to use multi. And the model type there are three. There's heli, uh, plane and multi and if you select heli you can choose the various swash types. But in my case I'm just going to use it as a uh, multi rotor. So I'm going to choose uh, multi and next is TX power. And if you're flying indoors, you don't really need to set this too high. It could basically go anywhere from 10 to 150 milliwatts. And the higher the number, the more range you'll get, but you'll also drain more power. I'm going to set this around 100 milliwatts. And the next option you want to set is the protocol. So this uh, transmitter su supports a lot of protocols. But um, as you can see, as I scroll through them, it supports D, uh, DSM, DSMX, um, FlySky. It supports... Uh, many protocols that uh, you'll probably never use. So um, it's all there, FR Sky, uh, V202, High Sky, SEMA, etc. And we're just gonna scroll through it and find uh, MJXQ, and that's the protocol that is used by the Esheen E10, so the MJXQ protocol. And within that protocol itself, there are other settings. So if you hit enter, you can choose the format and what you want to do is choose E010, which will work with the Ishin E10. And that's pretty much it for the initial setup of this model. Uh, there's not a lot to configure. And to quickly bind it with your model, all you have to do is move it down to reinit and just uh, hit enter and start the bind with your quadcopter. And the next thing you want to set up is the mixer. And in here, this is where you can reverse your channels. And I know for a fact that the Ishin E10 will need to have the aileron and the rudder reversed. So hit enter and go in there to reverse the channel. And uh, you'll want to do this as well for rudder. 
and go in there and hit uh, reverse as well. And when the channels are reversed, you'll see that it has an exclamation mark in front of the channel. And that tells you that the channel is reversed. If you want to add more channels, like if you want to have the switches do something, this is also where you can configure that in the mixer. But for most um, four channel quadcopters, this should be um, simple enough. But if you want, you can also set uh, channel five to a switch, channel six to a switch to activate, say, a light or um, um, make it flip. So that's where you do it. And these are the other settings in the model men menu, but you don't really need to touch those. It's just the one, these two here, model setup and mixer. And that's all you really need to do in terms of setting up a model. So going back to the main menu, this is where um, you can go to the transmitter menu section. And this is where you can set up things like, um, like the language, uh, whether it's mode two or mode one, you can calibrate the sticks the volume, as well as the low voltage cutoff. So this is where you can set that. You can also set things like the backlight. So if you want it to be dimmer or uh, brighter, you can set this here. I usually set it around um, basically two, I think. And you can set the contrast as well. I usually set it around five or turn it off completely. So um, you can adjust that accordingly. And when the backlight turns off, there are a lot of settings that uh, relate to the transmitter itself that you can set if uh, depending on your preference and this is where you would go and uh, change things like that and in the usb section this is where you can hook it up to your computer and then activate usb mode and this is where you can access the memory that's on the um, transmitter itself unfortunately the mini usb port is not accessible unless you take the back off so uh, the very final thing we're going to look at is the about section and this is where you could find the version of the firmware that you're running so this is running a version of the firmware made for the devo 7e and it is version 5.0.0. So now I'll show you how to bind the Ishin E10 to the uh, T8SG. You'll need your battery and plug it up to the quadcopter and you'll see that it's blinking really fast. So that's in uh, pairing mode right now. And in your transmitter model settings, you wanna go down to re-init and all you have to do is hit enter and it should take a couple of seconds and you'll see that the light is solid now and that tells you that it is bound to the quadcopter. The T8SG is a great little radio for anyone wanting just one radio to control all their RC aircraft. Is this better than a Tranus with the latest STM32 4-in-1 multi-module? I'd say no. No one really has done this before where they make a radio with all the, all the RF modules installed out of the box. So there will most likely be improvements to come, but it's a good start though. The developers who wrote Deviation TX created something great and to see it in a commercial product is amazing. Without their hard work, products like this wouldn't exist. Hopefully they had some input into this radio and if not, Jumper should really consider working with them to make the next version even better. The idea of an all-in-one universal transmitter that you can buy off the shelf is one that I've been long waiting for. I still prefer having an FR Sky Tyrannus with a separate STM32 4-in-1 module since the Tyrannus is better built and I prefer OpenTX over Deviation TX. However, the Jumper T8SG still has its place. If you fly mostly indoor toy quads and want a better radio than the stock included one, this will be a great radio and at a lower price point than the Tyrannus and a separate 4-in-1 module. I'm definitely hanging on to this one until something better comes along. It works out of the box without any soldering or in installing of external external modules with a simple model setup you're up and flying. Anyways that's it for this review. I'd like to thank Banggood for sending me this. Links to everything I mentioned should be in the description if you're interested in picking them up. Share, comment, like, subscribe and I will see you in the next video.